Super. Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, and thank you, everybody, for joining us this morning. Um, uh, before I start, there's one important announcement I need to make, which is that if you would like uh, to make comments or pose any questions throughout the course of this morning, I understand that there is a dedicated speaker request form accessible in the chat board of the WebEx platform. So as I say, if you wish to make any comments or pose any questions, please use that speaker request form and there will be an opportunity to answer those questions and reflect on those comments uh, later on during the session. Now, as I say, excellencies, colleagues, friends, good morning. I hope everybody is well. Uh, and thank you very much for joining this informal briefing on the eighth multi-stakeholder forum on science, technology and innovation for the SDGs which, as you know, or I hope you know, will be held on the 3rd and 4th of May in the Trusteeship Council Chamber. I also would like to start by saying many thanks to colleagues from DESA, UNCTAD, the Interagency Task Force, uh, a task team, I apologise, on STI for the SDGs, and the 10 member group of high-level representatives for their continued work and for their invaluable support that they have so far provided to the co-chairs. We are very grateful indeed. Now, I think colleagues, as you may know, this year, the UK and South Africa are co-chairing the forum. Uh, I'm gonna spend the next few minutes providing, it says a bit more information, it's actually quite a lot of information, so I will walk through it quite slowly. I will then invite Ambassador Holisa Mobongo, the DPR of South Africa, who is here on behalf of his ambassador, my co-chair, Ambassador Joini, who I believe is traveling at the moment. He will also provide further detail and then, as I say, I think we're going to hear from the, uh, the, the there, there'll be an opportunity for questions and comments towards the end on what we have said. Now, it's been more than two months since our first member state briefing. I have to say time has passed very quickly, which was, of course, convened by the president of ECOSOC. We are very pleased to have this opportunity to share with you updates about the progress made in the preparations for the STI forum and to answer any questions that you may subsequently have for us. I'm going to start with just recapping a few key points that have already been shared, uh, and then I will also give you some new information which I hope will be useful for your preparations. As I'm sure you know, the STI Forum is mandated to provide an input to the annual session of the High Level Political Forum on Sustainable Development, the HLPF of course, held under the auspices of ECOSOC. Consequently, its theme is aligned with that of the HLPF in July, namely science, technology and innovation for accelerating the recovery from COVID-19 and the full implementation of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development at all levels. So special attention will be devoted to those SDGs that are under review at the HLPF, SDG 6, which is Clean Water and Sanitation, SDG 7, Affordable and Clean Energy, SDG 9 on Industry, Innovation and Infrastructure, SDG 11 on Sustainable Cities and Communities, and of course, SDG 17, Partnership for the Goals. But in addition, we hope and we are very keen that this year's deliberations in the STI Forum will also serve as a stepping stone towards the SDG Review Summit in September, including by showcasing solutions and initiatives that can accelerate our progress towards the SDGs at this particular critical juncture. The STI Forum will feature an opening and a closing session, a ministerial session and seven thematic sessions. Draft programme of the Forum is already available on the 2023 STI Forum website, so if you haven't had an opportunity yet to have a look at it, I would encourage you to do so. The sessions are envisaged to be highly interactive. I would like to emphasise that we are very keen that they are so, but that, that they are also reflective of the multi-stakeholder nature, nature of the forum. Now, in a moment, Professor Karisha Abdul Karim, the co-chair of the Secretary General's 10 member group of high-level representatives, will elaborate in a bit more detail on those thematic areas and the topics for discussion at the forum and I think a sense of also what we hope will come out of those discussions as well. In addition, uh, in addition to those thematic sessions, there will be five informal special events 
as well as numerous side events, which will also be held either in person or virtually before, during and after the official meeting days. And one of those special events and one that I am particularly looking forward to is the STI in Africa event on the 2nd of May. We're holding this for the first time uh, and the event has already garnered a huge amount of interest. We hope that it will enrich the debates of the forum by highlighting both the unique challenges, but also the solutions stemming from the African continent. Now, in terms of format and participation, the official meetings of the forum this year, so that's the opening, the closing, the ministerial session and the thematic sessions will be held in person in the trusteeship council chamber. Those interested in following them online will be able to do so by watching the proceedings on UN Web TV. Forum is open for participation by all accredited delegates and representatives. Uh, with regard to the official meetings, delegations who are not members of ECOSOC will be invited to request seating with a nameplate in advance through an online form. The online form will be circulated through ECOSOC announcements in the e-delegate portal in due course. Members of ECOSOC will have seating prearranged and do not need to complete the form, however. Delegations that are not a member of the Council and who have not completed the form by the deadline may request seating in the room during the official meetings of the forum. Representatives of NGOs and other stakeholders who wish to attend the forum, as well as the par parallel events, should register to the forum on DESA's website. That registration is currently open, but it will close on the 14th of April. So please do so by the 14th of April. Now, the ministerial session. So delegations whose ministers wish to speak during the ministerial session should register through the e-speakers module in the e-delegate portal. A concept note for the ministerial session with proposed guiding questions will soon be made available on the STI forum website. It will also be circulated through e-delegates, so please keep an eye out for that. Inscription in the list of speakers for the ministerial session will open on Monday the 3rd of April at 10 a.m. will close on Monday the 24th of April at 5 p.m. Again, that's Monday the 24th of April at 5 p.m. So please ensure you have inscribed on that list by that date. Delegations you will be expected to deliver statements in person in the Trusteeship Council Chamber. Uh, in order to hear as many statements as possible within the limited time available, and we don't have a huge amount of time for the ministerial session, we will be imposing a time limit of three minutes per statement, and that will be strictly implemented. Um, so please, please bear that in mind uh, when drafting or coordinating your minister's statements. A provisional list of ministers that have expressed an interest in speaking during the ministerial session will be circulated prior to the opening of the forum. Delegations not delivering a statement at the ministerial session, including those represented below ministerial level, may choose instead to submit written statements to the Secretariat. And the contacts for that will be available in the participant guide. And it goes without question, of course, that we very much are looking forward to your minister's participation and would very much encourage your ministers to participate. Now, I appreciate that's quite a lot of information I've already downloaded. Um, I'm now going to turn to my friend, Holisa Ambassador Momongo, the DPR of South Africa to the UN, who is here on behalf of his ambassador, Joini, who, as I say, is my co-chair this year for the STI Forum, but unfortunately, I think is traveling at the moment. So Holisa, perhaps I can at this stage hand the floor to you. Thank you, uh, Tom, and good morning and greetings to all colleagues and experts who are attending the, the meeting this morning. As Tom has indicated, Ambassador Joini is attending the meeting of the Commission on Science and Technology for Development, 
that is currently taking place uh, this week in Geneva. So I will continue uh, from where Tom left, uh, starting with the thematic sessions. So for the interactive discussions during the thematic sessions, there will be no advanced inscription for those wishing to speak. Requests to speak during the interactive discussions should be made in each session by pressing the microphone button on the console in the trusteeship council chamber. Interventions should be limited to three minutes or less. The time limit will be strictly implemented, including through the muting of microphones. Moving to interpretation. Interpretation in all six UN official languages will be available for all official meetings during the STI forum. Written copies of all prepared statements delivered in the STI forum should be sent to estatements at un.org. I believe delegations are familiar with this as soon as possible and no later than two hours in advance of the delivery, indicating the name and date of the meeting and delegation in the subject line in order to ensure proper interpretation. Statements submitted to e-statements will be available in the entry for the relevant meeting in the UN journal. Now I will move on to stakeholder engagement. UN DESA will conduct a process to identify stakeholders that will be considered to deliver short interventions from the floor during the different segments of the forum. Details will be shared directly with registered participants. Site events. A program of site events is now available on the 2023 STI Forum website. There will be a total of 48 site events, 25 of them held in person and the others virtually. Now I move on to talk about the outcome. Regarding the outcome of the STI Forum, we as the coaches will seek to capture the result of both the formal sessions as well as the associated events and discussions in our formal summary to be transmitted to the HLPF. And my last comment would be on the budget. Finally, dear colleagues, as our predecessors have done before us, I would like to remind you that re regrettably, the mandates of the technology facilitation mechanism remain largely underfunded. Dedicated regular budget resources commensurate with the mandates and expectations are still lacking for key parts of the mechanism. This includes adequate support for participation in the STI Forum, the online technology platform 2030 Connect, mandated activities of the 10-member group, and practical work of the interagency task, uh, task team. We thank those who have made voluntary contributions to support the mechanism. However, the chronic lack of funding continues to have an, an impact on what the STI Forum can achieve. I will stop here and hand over again to the co-chair, Tom. Well, Holly, so thank you very much indeed, um, colleagues. As I say, um, that's quite a lot of download of information, of logistical operational information. If you have any questions about any of that, please do post them, as I said in the, in the chat, uh, and we will seek to answer those at the end. I'm sure this information will also be made available or, uh, or is available via DESA if you didn't capture everything that we have said. Now, We've talked a little bit about the, the sort of the nuts and bolts of how the meeting will be run. I'm very pleased at this stage, though, to hand the floor over to uh, Ms. Karisha Abdul Karim, who is the co chair of the 10 member group of high level representatives of civil society, private sector, and the scientific community to support the United Nations technology facilitation mechanism. Uh, Ms. Abdul Karim is the associate scientific director of. Risa, and she, I think, in her capacity as co-chair, is going to talk a little bit more about the substance of the forum, what the thematic sessions will address, uh, and as I say, what we hope some of the ideas coming out of those to feed into both of the HLPF and the SDG review later in the year might comprise. So can I give the floor to you, please? Thank you very much, Ambassador Woodhoff, and also to um, Deputy Ambassador Mabango for your um, introduction uh, to the STI Forum. Uh, excellencies, distinguished guests and friends and colleagues, um, it's a real honor and privilege to elaborate on the thematic sessions for the eight um, uh, STI Forum. 
uh, that we'll all be participating in. As Ambassador Woodrow in his opening remarks mentioned, it's barely two months since we had our a meeting, introductory meeting, uh, and uh, uh, following some um, brief planning sessions um, in New York. It's really exciting to have this forum as a face-to-face -face meeting. And I think as we think about the theme of science, technology, and innovation for accelerating recovery from COVID-19 and the full implementation of the 2030 Agenda for uh, Sustainable Development at all levels, we reminded one that we're just uh, emerging uh, from the COVID-19 pandemic, and it was more than an infectious disease. We continue to see the impact on lives and livelihoods. And uh, we seeing what the economic and social impacts are and continue to be. And as a reminder, uh, it's not yet over. We are reaching uh, stages of endemicity, but anything can happen, so it remains a threat. But it's also a threat that uh, really undermines some of the progress that was being made on the sustainable development goals. And so we have to do a bit of catch up. Uh, we also reminded that the midterm review is looming and two big meetings that will happen in the next several months. So as we think about the thematic areas to focus on in the SDGs, we're also thinking about this um, post-pandemic recovery process and its impact and implications. We are also reminded that we're running out of time and that uh, there was a need for some efficiency in clustering of the SDGs where possible so that we could look at synergies. And so as I walk you through the seven thematic sessions, you'll see a reflection of all of that uh, in the program. And so that's like, very ambitious to try and cover all of uh, those issues. The first uh, thematic session that I want to uh, elaborate on uh, was on building trust in science and technology. And I think while we celebrate um, all the um, advances we're making uh, uh, in terms of the use of science and technology, notably uh, even during the COVID um, pandemic, uh, unprecedented development of six vaccines in less than a year, uh, we've also seen a um, parallel epidemic of misinformation that's growing and manifesting in different ways, including uh, threats to security in some states. And this part is going to be is critical, not just for confidence in the scientists that are generating the signs, but also in terms of trust in government and decisions that governments are making. And so that theme was very important to kick us off to really um, bring together some of the issues around where is this um, going, how is it emerging, and how do we ensure that we're taking steps to uh, build that trust in science and technology. It's um, we, We've seen and we will hear again in this 8th SDI forum the importance of science, technology, and innovation, but it's all now positive, and how do we deal with that? The second thematic session is our attempt to bring together clusters with synergy of SDGs, and particularly, how do we integrate technological solutions for energy, food, water, and climate crises? These are independently important, but also there's a lot of synergies between them. Um, three of them at least deal with some very fundamental human rights uh, issues that remain unaddressed and in the 21st century and in this point um, of our um, SDG agenda uh, completely unacceptable and so I think we reminded again of some very basic rights that need to be met but are actually not being met and in some instances worsening so we're going to try and capture that in the second thematic session. The third is around the theme of uh, cities and particularly how people-led innovation and tech infrastructures are being used and, and how that can be advanced and others um, in partnership with uh, several groups. The, oh, one, 
the, the fourth session will deal with women who innovate and particularly looking at empowerment for today and tomorrow. And I think as much as we talk about science, technology and innovation, there are many facets of the SDGs where we see the issue of gender not being addressed and the inequities and inequalities continuing. And we also see at the same time the importance of addressing gender differences. And we can't really address any of the SDGs if these gaps uh, remain. And what we see is a separation, particularly at a very young age. And how do we address that? And how do we get more women to be playing a bigger role in the innovation space? Uh, because as we know well from the development literature, uh, women not only impact uh, half the population, but also societies benefit substantially in terms of investments we make in terms of women and what women can accomplish and do. Next session we look at is in the context of high inflation rates and um, and, and uh, economies that are really peeling over in some instances is uh, how do we coordinate better um, between global research organizations and particularly how do we use the funds that we have as shrinking as they are and as limited as they become to fund what matters. And that brings together a whole lot of the key partners to really take on that tough discussion and decision around uh, funding uh, priorities, what those priorities are, and how do we bring more synergy with the smallish uh, machine thing, um, funding uh, pot that there is there. And we've seen how the digital technology is leapfrogging some of us. We all had some experience in some form or the other in surviving COVID. 19 and some uh, degree of normality. But uh, here again, we see large inequities in terms of who has access within and between countries. And so this is really about setting up the infrastructure and dealing with issues of equitable digital future for all. It has the potential to leapfrog us. But you can only do that if we have equity in the space. And then lastly, what one of the last thematic session will focus on is to really consolidate the key messages for taking forward in the SDG summit and the future summit as well. And this is about taking stock of all of the uh, STI in, uh, stuff in relation to accelerating the SDGs. So that um, chairperson is uh, uh, as much as I will use the five minutes to elaborate on the thematic sessions. I'm quite happy to expand on that uh, during the Q&A session. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Ms. Abdul Karim. That was that was very helpful indeed. And can I just actually take the opportunity to say, and on behalf of I know of Ambassador Joini as well, through you to thank all of the members of the ten, the ten member group for their help in sort of realizing the vision that uh, Ambassador Joini and I had for the STI forum this year. I think as, as you walked through the program, clearly trying to cram quite a lot into quite a short space of time, um, <clears throat> but both Ambassador Joini and myself were very keen, as you said, to think not only about how this year's STI forum will contribute to the HLPF, but also to the September uh, midterm review of the SDGs to the processes, some of the processes currently ongoing or will, will be soon ongoing through our common agenda leading up to the summit of the future, but also to link it through to other discussions that have been taking place uh, in the UN this year. And hence, um, and this is something that I know Ambassador Joini personally feels very strongly about, hence the session on closing the gender gap and looking at how can we get more women and girls into science, technology and innovation building, of course, on the discussions that have just recently taken place in the Commission on the Status of Women, of which Ambassador Joini was uh, chair there as well. So it's about bringing to life, I think, some of the conversations that we've already been having this year. Um, <clears throat> colleagues, I'm sure you may have questions on some of that, which we can pick up at the end. As I, I think the programme, as I said, I think is available on the website. Uh, I'm hoping there may also be a little bit more detail that underpins each of those sessions available on the website as well. And if not, it will be 
made available soon. But I would like <clears throat> at this stage then to open the floor, comments and questions. Um, remind you again that if you want to ask any, any questions or make any comments, please inscribe through the online request form that is posted on the chat board of this platform. Please ensure that your full name and the name of your delegation is uh, or your accredited organization appears as part of your WebEx username in order to be given the floor so we know who you are. That would be very helpful. I already have uh, uh, two people on my list of speakers. So I would like to start, if I may, by giving the floor to the distinguished representative of the Persons with Disabilities Stakeholder Group. Uh, and they will then be followed by the distinguished representative sure. of you. the scientific and technological community major. Okay. So if I may start with the representative of the Persons with Disabilities Stakeholder Group, the floor is yours, please. Thank you, Excellency. My name is Mohamed Lutfi. I'm the representative of the Stakeholder Group of Persons with Disabilities. I'm also the Director of Capacity Building and Advocacy at the Global Initiative for Inclusive Information and Communication Technologies, a, flag a UN flagship initiative launched 15 years ago uh, and, and, uh, upon the, uh, the, the adoption of the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. First of all, I would like to thank you um, for hosting this meeting and also for the excellent preparation uh, for the uh, STI Summit uh, and all of the uh, thematic issues uh, that would be addressed during the summit. Um, I would like just to address a couple of issues here. During the pandemic, we have realized that uh, persons with disabilities, among other marginalized groups have had issues with access to technology, especially that technology was the, the main channel or main tool to keep the wor people, the world can, connected with each other. And access to information was one of the key needs during that time for people to keep living, keep alive. Now, in the, at the same time, we realized that technology, despite all of the progress that has, been, has taken place over the last uh, year, few years, uh, there is still, uh, uh, and I would really second the uh, request or the message by Ms. Abdel Karim about the inequity in uh, accessing technology among marginalized groups, especially persons with disabilities. It's a big, still, a, it remains a big issue. Um, We're hoping that uh, SCI would give us, give us the chance to uh, address this, this matter uh, whether during the uh, open uh, discussion or any uh, side events possible or parallel uh, dialogues during the summit. And also, um, we would like to make sure that uh, the summit itself would pursue accessibility in terms of the technology being used or the uh, arrangements for or the conference arrangements for persons with disabilities who wish to, who wish to attend. Um, so. Um, uh, that's that's uh, that's what this is what I would like to address. And, and, and on behalf of G3ICT, we are about to launch a toolkit on e-accessibility uh, uh, model policy, a policy model toolkit uh, that can really feed into this whole uh, dialogue and discussion around issues of technology and science and innovation. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Mohammed. If I may, may call you that, thank you very much indeed for your your comments and your questions. I will um, I will ask uh, the representative of uh, the secretariat in due course to come back on the question about accessibility to the forum itself. I think your point, though, about ensuring that conversations, and I'm thinking particularly around session six on forging an equitable digital future for all, address not just inequalities between communities, but inequalities within communities as well. So I think it's very important that that point about how to ensure that no one is left behind, including um, persons with disabilities, is, is very much front and centre of that conversation. Um, but thank you very much. Now, the next speaker on my list, apologies, I'm just checking the list on my phone. Uh, the next uh, speaker, uh, if I may hand the floor, please, to the representative of the Scientific and Technological Community Major Group. You have the floor, please. Thank you, Your Excellency. Uh, my name is Gunarlan. 
I'm the co-chair for the science technology community, uh, representing the World Federation of Engineering Organization and the International Science Council. At the outset, I'd like to express our sincere gratitude to both you and the co-chair for having engaged us in this ongoing conversations to shape this year's STI forum. As discussed with the president of ECOSOC and others during the course of these conversation, one, our desire is to raise the awareness of the STI forum and what the STI forum is. And as I have shared with Her Excellency during a presentation, Orisha, is that this STI forum should become a honest broker for science, technology, innovation, and engineering for all concerned. And uh, one of the other pleas, you know, we talk about being in person, you know, we shouldn't lose an opportunity that was provided to us. You know, one of the good things that the COVID has provided us is a means to connect virtually, no matter where you are. And if you're truly talking about leaving no one behind, you know, being in person shouldn't be an impediment for folks that need to express their views and opinions from wherever they are. So we, we need to use this opportunity to connect digitally everybody across the globe so that we don't leave anybody or leave any voice out of the conversation. And uh, we also have submitted a request to have a permanent ongoing session so that the International Science Council and the World Federation of Engineers can bring to bear to this platform and to the UN, the things that weave through, even as um, my colleague Mohammed has pointed out with people with disabilities, science, technology, innovation, and engineering, weaves through all of the major groups and their issues. There are a lot of things that our group can contribute to improving the quality of life of all stakeholders. And so we would like to request that we have a session at each of the STI forums so that we can bring to bear on what's the cutting edge, what's in the horizon, what is to be expected, and more importantly, as you pointed out, what is it that we are actually doing on the ground to improve the quality of life across the board, everywhere, in all sectors uh, that we touch on? Because as I said, you know, engineers are here to implement, and um, we talk about sustainable, infra sustainable and re resilient infrastructure, which improves the quality, which is inclusive, and provides uh, you know the quality of life for all without leaving anybody behind. So this is a great opportunity for this forum to be viewed as the honest brokers for all people involved using science and technology, and more importantly, as pointed out, it is also the responsibility of this forum to, to build the trust and confidence in the science, technology, and innovation going forward so that that is not being questioned. That would be of great assistance to us in what we do, and also is, there are a lot of things that we can be of assistance to major groups and others, so we are standing by steady to provide our support and uh, to to this forum, to you and to you and Desa and to the presidency. Thank you very much and appreciate the opportunity to share my thoughts. I, mean, I always say when you speak from your heart, you don't have to say, think about what you said yesterday, what you're going to say today or what you're going to say tomorrow. So that's, that's the honest opinion for the group and we look forward to working with you to make this year a successful and also the years to come ahead. Alan, thank you very much. I think that's a philosophy that we should all carry with us every day. Um, there were a couple of questions in there. And again, Lotte, I'm going to come back to you uh, in due course about the, the point around inclusivity and how can we ensure that this year's forum, whilst being in person, is also as accessible as possible. And then perhaps, um, Ms. Abdul Karim, I will come back to you on Gunalan's point about the, some of the content of the sessions. Um, but before I do that, I have a third uh, speaker on my list. Um, so, can I please now give the floor to the representative of the LGBTI stakeholder group? Have the floor, thank you.
Thank you so much, Ambassador. And I just want to echo everything that my colleagues from the other major groups and stakeholders have mentioned before. It is a hard job going after them, as they have mentioned so many important issues of our group. Um, I just also want to thank both of you and South Africa for being members of the UN LGBTI core group and for pushing LGBTI issues in all aspects of the UN here in headquarters. I also work for an organization called Our International who sits as the secretariat and we're very happy to continue working together in these different spaces. Um, and I also just want to congratulate both of you on having a gender inclusive and gender transformative focus on this SCI forum, which I think is so necessary, especially considering the conversations we just had during the Commission on the Status of Women and also the conversations we had on the third committee last year that was so focused on different kinds of affectations of technology in the lives of everyone, especially those who are most marginalized. But I also have to bring the message from my, my stakeholder group, otherwise, um, it wouldn't be fair to them, but I also want to bring that, you know, UN and civil society studies have shown that women who experience multiple and intersecting forms of discrimination are at a greater risk of being harassed and being victims of violence by the usage of technology, and in particular LGBTI persons, as we saw in the UNFPA report that came out last year. We also see LGBTI human rights defenders coming under a disproportionate level of attack particularly those who work and protect to advance the rights of transgender people, which we're seeing as a pattern globally. Um, technologies are further used by state and non-state actors to persecute and harm LGBTI persons and to perpetuate false and dangerous narratives about our communities. A lot of the times having our own websites and information being blocked and considered crimes in a lot of the countries around the globe. And we see homo -bi transphobic misogynistic and other forms of hate speech being promoted and amplified through technology and specifically through social media without any recourse and with impunity. All that leads to increased discrimination and that violence also translate into uh, non-virtual and real life violence, not only to LGBTI populations, but to everyone. And I think it's important that we include these conversations because we had the Secretary General's report for CSLU and the UNFPA reports mentioning on technology facilitated gender-based violence. And I think that this has to be discussed in this STI forum, just because I think this is a space where we do have experts to have those kinds of conversations and that we don't continue to leave an entire population behind, just reminding everyone, as I do every time I have an opportunity to speak in these meetings, that LGBTI people are not mentioned once in the SDGs, but if we're not included in the implementation of the SDGs and in the halfway mark, and everything else, then we're not going to achieve the SDGs if the entire part of the population is excluded, left behind, and we don't have actual data from most of the countries on what is happening. I also just want to highlight that for us, it is so important that we have this gender transformative approach with data collection and respect to use of technology, considering that LGBTI populations have been in the creation and in the usage of very different kinds of science, technology, innovation. And even though we are seen a lot of the times as the victims of uses of those, we are also active members on the creation and participation in the spaces. Um, and one last point that we recommend is that it, this is a great forum for us to have conversations about root causes, not only misogyny and sexism, but you know, also homophobia, transphobia, racism, ableism, and other forms of discrimination that exist on participating and actually being included in SCI. And I thank you all, and I leave uh, the doors open for any kind of conversation with the LGBTI stakeholder group. We would love to participate in any of the sessions that we think this is a cross-cutting issue, gender is a cross-cutting issue, and we look forward for the push for both of our champions that are leading the work today and continue talking about this gender transformative approach. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Some really uh, very important uh, points made there indeed. Um, uh, I'm, 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 I'm sure I'm not really supposed to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, just, just to flag <laughs> That the UK, I'm, I'm very pleased that the UK's proposal for a side event has been agreed, and that side event is looking at how to 
ensure better uh, representation and inclusivity of the LGBTI community in science, tech and innovation. So if my colleagues in the UK mission are not already in touch with you, and I hope they are, I will um, encourage them to reach out to you so we can talk about some of how we work some of those issues, not only into our side event, but in the moment, I'm also going to ask Ms. Abdul Karim to reflect on perhaps how we can reflect some of those issues in the broader work of the forum itself. Now, I've got two further speakers on my list. Um, the uh, ITU followed by the IAEA, but first, if I can give the floor to the representative of the International Tele Telecommunication Union, please, you have the floor. Morning and good afternoon. My name is Mario Castro Grande. I'm a senior external affairs officer at ITU, and thank you, Ambassador Woodruff and Ambassador Macongo, and to all of those who have provided information on this year's uh, STI forum. Um, we are particularly pleased this year on the focus of digital technologies and the need to, for meaningful connectivity and uh, their implications, both in terms of challenges and opportunities to achieve and rescue the SDGs. And I would like to take this opportunity to share with you the International Telecommunication Union's key activities for the STI Forum this year, which include uh, a special opening ceremony event for the exhibit Metaverse for SDG Lab and Innovators Advancing the SDGs Across the World. And this is being done in collaboration with UNDESA and Exponential Destiny on Wednesday, the 3rd of May in the trustee council chair chamber. Um, the exhibit will consist of a virtual reality experience that was created by a, a team of youth from over 70 countries around the world who are participating in a global competition on the metaverse for SDGs. And via virtual reality headsets, attendees will be immersed to experience demonstrations that build empathy, awareness, and education for the SDGs. And I would like to invite everyone to attend and visit the exhibit and join the, the virtual reality experience. Uh, we will also be hosting four side events uh, starting on Tuesday, the 2nd of May, a virtual event on building the pathway to sustainable digital transformation. Again, it aims to shed light on the opportunities and challenges, including digital solutions to rescue the SDGs. On Wednesday, the 3rd of May, in collaboration with uh, the United for Smart Sustainable City Austrian Country Hub and the Permanent Mission of Austria, a, we will have a virtual event on building back smarter and more sustainable cities through the United for Smart Sustainable Cities initiative, which aims to explore how digital solutions can support cities and how they can be scaled up quickly to accelerate transformation to increase efficiencies, economic development, sustainability, life quality for citizens in urban areas, including accelerating the recovery from COVID-19 and overall achieving uh, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development Goals. And um, following that on Thursday, the 4th of May, in collaboration with the Permanent Mission of Saudi Arabia, a virtual event will be held on leveraging the metaverse in cities to achieve the SDGs which also aims to directly address the, and highlight the promising developments in the metaverse, particularly in the context of how cities leverage this emerging technology to accelerate their pathways to achieving the SDGs. And finally, on the third, uh, on the Thursday, the 4th of May, we will also have an in-person event uh, organized by ITU, UNESCO, the, the Broadband Commission for Sustainable Development, the Global Partnership Forum, and we also are looking into having some uh, participation from uh, UN member states in a roundtable on generative uh, AI for the SDGs, friend or foe, hope or high. And I would like to invite everyone to, to join us for these events and, and contribute. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Thank you, Mario. Fascinating uh, series of events there. I, I, I can't promise I'll make them all, but I'm going to certainly try and come along to the opening ceremony for the Metaverse for SDGs. That sounds really very exciting indeed. Um, and fi the final uh, name on my list or the final group on my list if I may, please give the floor to the representative of the International Atomic Energy Agency, the IAEA. You have the floor, please. Thank you, Your Excellency Ambassador Tom Wood and uh, Excellency Ambassador Joini, co chairs of the SEI Forum. My name is Ambassador Vivian Okeke. I'm retired ambassador. Uh, I'm uh, representing the International Atomic Energy Agency at the UN and the heading the uh, office, the liaison office of the International Atomic Energy Agency. The IAEA is a member of the inter, uh, uh, in, uh, the IET uh, task force, and um, 
We have indicated interest in participating in the session on on the um, how the technological innovation on the use of, of uh, water, energy, and food uh, crisis. And um, we are also interested in participating in the STI for Africa because um, about more than 30 uh, percent of the member states of the IAEA are from Africa. And the, the gain that they derive from membership of the agency is the peaceful use of nuclear science and technology in helping them to address the, the, the developmental challenges in the area of uh, human health, in the uh, like cancer treatment, and in the area of uh, uh, food security, in the area of uh, energy, provision of uh, uh, low carbon uh, electricity through nuclear power. And so the director um, technical cooperation uh, for Africa will be interested in participating in that uh, side event. And also uh, an expert who will uh, talk more about the, uh, the nuclear derived techniques, how it is used in helping to mitigate climate uh, crisis. Uh, will will be uh, participating in the side, side event on the uh, the nexus between climate change and uh, food security, and also in the area of um, looking for scientific data for global goods. Uh, just um, two weeks ago, um, the IAEA launched the Global uh, Water Analysis Laboratory Network. It's uh, it's an aim to provide hydrologic uh, data for member states for, for better management of their water resources. So in that aspect, uh, helping to implement SDGCs, the IAEA is also uh, very much proud to so, uh, support the work of the, 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 the STI in providing uh, the technology that they have, that member states have used and is proven to help them uh, to showcase that during the SCI forum. So I just want to uh, highlight these points and uh, hope that it will be taken uh, under consideration. Thank you. Ambassador Okegi, thank you very much uh, for those comments and reflections. Now, um, I don't have any more speakers or requests for the floor. So what I'm going to do is turn back to um, a number of colleagues from, from Dessa and Angtad uh, to respond to some of those questions. But before doing that, I'm going to uh, ask you, if I may, um, as Abdul, Karim, Karisha, do you have any reflections or would you like to make any reflections on any of the points that have been raised by our speakers? Sure. Thanks, Ambassador Woodruff. Uh, firstly, uh, I think it's been incredibly valuable and useful to have these um, insights provided. Uh, as we continue to uh, refine and um, and develop each of the thematic sessions, I did. Uh, I was asked to focus just on the thematic sessions, but I want to use this opportunity to uh, draw attention to the science um, policy briefs uh, that uh, were, uh, and there several uh, um, uh, of them. Uh, I think the last. Um, uh, count had about 150 or so science policy briefs being prepared. So I just want to encourage everyone that even if you don't find the space in the thematic session or in the side events and the exhibitions, we've heard a few of those full listing will be in the full program. These are all spaces where they provide opportunities for ensuring that each of the issues that we want to address for peace and prosperity and inclusivity is addressed. Um, we will try as much as possible in each of the thematic sessions uh, to cover some of the issues raised, again, ensuring nobody is left behind, but specifically the issues around uh, forging um, uh, an e e uh, equitable uh, digital future for all, and the other session on um, building trust in science and technology, I think, was a common theme coming in from the various inputs. And, and I think as we put those down, there was initial 
you know, it's not against the themes that are out there and so on. But we specifically put it down because that's the opportunities, I think, to address some of the concerns of who are we leaving behind in our responses. But in terms of Bonalan's point around how do we use that state of the art technology was the issue of the policy briefs. And then I would also say the global roadmaps um, are something else I want to flag and highlight, which is not covered in the seven thematic sessions. And then to please, please, please use the social media platforms and outlets to uh, start this conversation. Because I think the more we put out there, the, uh, the more we can start that dialogue, make sure that we inclusive as possible, and that we're addressing all the key and critical issues. It is a pivotal moment, and we don't want to miss that moment. It's the time to get us back on track and at the same time ensure that um, uh, some of the new issues that emerged and continue to emerge post-pandemic that we're learning about every day, I think is also part of both facilitating as well as ensuring that new issues are not lost and that the existing and old challenges that face us uh, don't get left behind. Thank you very much. Thank you indeed, Carisha. Now, <clears throat> um, Chantal, Chantal uh, Carpentier from UNCTAD, can I perhaps turn to you at this point for any reflections or thoughts you may have on any of the comments or questions posed? Uh, by the representatives of the various stakeholder groups. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ambassador Woodruff. And uh, yeah, perhaps I could just on this question on uh, inclusion, um, uh, just to mention that this Commission on Sustainable uh, Commission on Science Technology for Development is ongoing in Geneva. And in reaction to the second theme that has been covered this year, which is ensuring safe water sanitation for all, a solution uh, by STI, uh, that this theme of inclusion and reducing inequality in the development context has been raised um, quite a bit. Um, perhaps also just mentioning that also in terms of the, the two science technology innovation policy reviews that have been done for Botswana and Angola, uh, it is clear also that the, the need for capacity building in policy making and policy development and implementation is very important if we want to have equality um, and not the growing inequality we're seeing in STI. Um, and, and just perhaps mentioning that uh, the colleagues will have the opportunity to be brief at the STI by the co-chair of the SCSTD. Uh, and so perhaps some of these could be, uh, will be further um, elaborated. Uh, but I will uh, just stop here and leave. But, uh, thank you very much, Chantal. And then finally, if I may, uh, Lotta, I may turn to you on behalf of the Secretariat. Um, there were a couple of specific questions which I think it would be very useful for you to address if you may. One is about ensuring access, ensuring the forum as accessible as possible, particularly for those uh, with disabilities. And then there was also, I think, a question around how can we make the forum uh, inclusive? So not only uh, restricted to those in person in the room, but how can we perhaps open it up online virtually for for, for participation that uh, that in, in that means. So perhaps if you could address those as well as anything else you want to reflect on, that would be super helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, colleagues, or good morning. Um, on the first question on making the forum uh, accessible that was raised by the representative of the persons with the disabilities major group, um, the STI forum uh, will follow the overall general guidelines for accessibility for UN meetings. Um, you know, we are also exploring uh, the possibility of having CART services uh, provided uh, for the official meetings um, so that um, they will have closed caption. Um, and uh, information in this regard uh, will be made available in the uh, guidance note to participants, uh, which is available online and we, it will be updated uh, as we move closer to the STI forum. Uh, on the topic of uh, in, um, making the forum uh, inclusive, uh, just a few uh, reminders first. We have currently uh, ongoing the registration of uh, stakeholders uh, to attend and participate 
in the STI forum. Uh, this uh, registration will close on the 14th of April. So for all the stakeholders, um, please make sure that you submit uh, your registrations uh, by that deadline. Once the registration is closed, we will open a process to seek interest from stakeholders to intervene during the question and answer sessions um, throughout uh, the formal sessions. So this will be circulated uh, to all stakeholders who have registered uh, to attend um, the SDI forum. And um, together with the co-chairs, uh, we will be carving out uh, time throughout all the sessions to ensure that there will be opportunities for also stakeholders to make interventions um, in the interactive uh, sessions. Uh, moreover, um, a number of the side events uh, that are being held, um, as the Ambassador Woodrow mentioned, we have 48 side events uh, held uh, as part of the forum. Uh, a number of these side events are also organized by uh, stakeholders and uh, several of them are taking place virtually. Um, on um, the possibility of uh, virtual uh, participation, um, as was mentioned, uh, all the formal sessions of the STI forum uh, will be webcast, so they can be uh, followed online um, um, no matter your geographical location. Um, there will be a dedicated special event with representatives of major groups and other stakeholders. Um, we will explore the possibility uh, with the organizers of potentially doing that special event perhaps uh, virtually so as to enable the widest range of participation uh, possible. Um, and we will uh, look into some additional ways of uh, perhaps uh, seeking uh, inputs from stakeholders, um, any dedicated questions uh, they would like to raise in connection uh, with the thematic sessions beforehand virtually, and we can look into ways of feeding those questions uh, to the moderators of the panels. I think, Ambassador, uh, I hope I have answered your questions. Lotta, yes, you have. Thank you very much indeed. That was very helpful. I mean, I'm sure, uh, uh, speaking on behalf of uh, Ambassador Joini, because I, we have we we have discussed this, and I, you know that we've discussed this. I think the the more that we can make the sessions accessible to those who are online and watching online, um, who are able to maybe post questions or email questions in or email comments in that then get fed into the debate that's happening in the room. I think we would be very supportive of that. I appreciate that there are various logistical constraints to making that operate. Um, throughout the whole two days, but I, uh, it's, perhaps it's something that, that we can take away and discuss at our, our next meeting. Super, colleagues, um, I've exhausted everybody on the list. Uh, so with that, um, I am just going to turn back to Holly Sir, if I may, for any final reflections or thoughts from him. Uh, thank you, Tom. Uh, not much from me, except uh, to thank uh, Professor Karim and the Den member group all those who took part in the conversation this morning and of course we thank the, the secretariat for their support all, all the time so uh, thank you very much i'll stop here so lisa and I, I can just simply echo that really thank you everybody for joining us this morning online i hope this has been a useful briefing session um please continue to keep an eye on the sti forum website for latest updates uh and uh please just um continue to reach out with any questions. And if I may also just conclude by thanking everybody who has participated this morning um, and to say very much looking forward to seeing everybody in May, in the, the first week of May for a, um, a useful, invigorating two, three days of discussion about the role of science, tech and innovation in delivering the SDGs. So with that, everybody have a very lovely day uh, and I uh, look forward to speaking with you soon. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Thank you.